Less than a week before his inauguration, Donald Trump finds himself engaged in battles with the intelligence community, skeptics on Capitol Hill, and the news media. A public opinion poll this week from Quinnipiac finds the president-elect's favorability rating is 37 percent. That is a seven-point drop from just after the election. Here with Morris Jacob Weisberg, chairman and editor-in-chief of Slate. Jacob, it is always good to see you. Good morning. Good morning, Alex. There's a lot to cover here. Let's start with James Comey first. Democrats who had a closed-door meeting with him at the end of this week seem deeply unhappy. Do we expect that they're going to push for his resignation? I don't know, and I don't know if it matters if they do. They don't have a majority. They're not going to, they're not going to force his resignation. But I think what they've seen is that Comey responds to political pressure. The release about Hillary Clinton that probably swung the election was because Republicans had leaned on him about that investigation, and he was worried about appeasing them. So the lesson is, if you want something from Comey, ask for it very aggressively. We end this week, Jacob, with, with lingering questions and perhaps unanswerable questions about Russian influence in, in this election and, and with, with the Trump campaign, in fact. Uh, do you expect this is going to loom over this, the entire transition into this new administration, or do you think this will blow over? Anthony, this, there's nothing more important. There's no way this can blow over. What we know is that Vladimir Putin intervened in an American election to try to subvert it and elect a candidate who got invert, uh, elected. Whether his intervention caused the election, we don't know. What we have reason to possibly believe and certainly to investigate is whether the Trump campaign connived in that intervention, whether they knew about it. That's until there is a credible independent investigation of that question. This doesn't go away. It, it's, it's the, it's, it, it goes to the heart of the question John Lewis brought up, which is the legitimacy of the new administration. Well, and then there's the question of his adversarial relationship with the press, right? Uh, let's talk a little bit. I'd like right. to know your perspective on BuzzFeed's decision to publish the full, unsubstantiated 35-page dossier of the Russian allegations. Yeah. Where do you sit on that in terms of that being a responsible move or not? Uh, I, w I wanted to read that document. I'm glad BuzzFeed published it because I got to read it. It was circulating in Washington. It was circulating in large parts of the media. It was circulating in the intelligence community. Uh, both President Obama and President-elect Trump had been briefed on it by the FBI and intelligence agencies. And I think at some point you say, everybody's talking about this document. We have to know what's in it. The point is it has to be treated with kid gloves in the sense that you say this is a document that was created privately, not by our intelligence agencies. We don't know whether a lot of what's in it is true. What I suspect is it is a kind of raw intelligence. It's gossip that was floating around Moscow. Quite likely, some of it is not true, some of it is true, and some of it's partially true. And we have to find out, we have to sort it out. But I think it being out there is beneficial to the public and really to the country. You had a number of, of nominees in the confirmation hearings this week, uh, cabinet nominees, break ranks with Trump on, on some issues ranging from the Russian hacking to the Muslim ban. I, are they really showing independence here, or are they just trying to get confirmed, do you think? Well, uh, Trump is a politician who may break ranks with himself on any day of the week or any, any hour of the day. I mean, you know, he had any number of campaign conversions on issues, and now you're seeing the nominees have a lot of confirmation conversions on issues. And I think the point is, Trump doesn't really care. He wants them to say, of course, what they need to say to get confirmed, which is what they're doing. But what the ultimate position of the administration will be isn't determined either what he's, by what he said on Twitter or, about, or about what, what, by what they're saying in the hearings. And then there's a the question of whether all of them are going to get confirmed, which is very much a TBD at this point. Jacob Weisberg, it's always good to see you. Thanks for your time and thoughts. Thank you, Alex.